How's it going everyone? I hope you're having an awesome week. I've been getting a whole bunch of questions about my still, how I made it, what the hell it is, and why I chose this type of still to start with. Last week I had a talk about my boiler and why I think that's so cool, so I figured this week would be an awesome time to have a chat about my CCVM still. Welcome Distiller everyone, this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. So if that's what you're into guys, if that's what you dig, have a think about subscribing so you don't miss anything else, make sure you hit that little bell notification icon too. I've been getting heaps of questions on the channel itself, on Facebook, on Facebook Messenger, on Reddit and even a couple on Instagram about my still, what the hell it is, why I chose it and for a brief overview on how to make this thing. And for those of you that have been asking if you can use my design to make your still as well, dude, go ahead, but this is not my design. I guess I tweaked a few little things just based on the materials I had available, but I did not come up with a concept for the CCVM still. Just so you know, guys, not me. <laughs> From memory, I think this traces back to a guy called Manu, uh, predominantly on the Home Distiller forum, and then a guy called Dad3000? 300 who kind of championed this still and got the design out there for more people to see. I've got this insulated at the moment, but I'll take it off just so we can see a bit better. So there's two things that really attracted me to this design. And the first is that you don't need a valve, which is expensive if you're going to get one that's got no parts in it that aren't uh, PTFE or straight stainless. It can be a bit tricky. It turns out that most reflux still designs really rely on that valve to be able to control the reflux ratio. Most vapor management stills and a bokeh still for example. Whereas the CCVM has no valve whatsoever. So that was cool for me. Second it's pretty easy to build compared to some of the other still designs that are going around. And third, you can use it as a true pot still or a true reflux still, which I think is really cool. A lot of people also say that this still is relatively easy to control compared to other stills. I can't comment on that because I haven't had any experience with anything else yet, so I just don't know. For those of you that have, I would appreciate some comments down below to see what you think on that matter there. The downside of a CCVM, I think, is the fact that it seems to not be as accurate or precise I feel like later on in my distilling career, that might be something that's more important to me and I'll really want to dial it into something specific. Right now, however, I'm happy just to learn as I go and I'll see where that takes me in the future. So I guess you probably wanna know what a CCVM still is if you're not quite sure. So let me go through that real quick right now. This here is just a two inch or 51 millimeter copper pipe. There's nothing fancy going on in here at all. This is the section that you would pack with something with a high surface area if you're going to use it as a reflux still, so copper mesh, stainless steel mesh, uh, the rasher rings, marbles, something along those lines can go in here. And to be fair, my column is definitely on the short side. I need to make an extension, I'll probably go another, I'll probably go at least another 40 centimeters depending on a few things. Uh, most likely the height of the roof may have something to do with it. But just so you know, this is on the short side if you're really going for that high ABV reflux neutral product. I decided to make my CCVM still modular. I thought it would be a really good idea to be able to pull it apart, put it back together in a different way, change a part out, use a part somewhere else, all those sorts of things, mostly because I wasn't sure what I would want to do in the future and how I would want to change things. So I'm doing that with tri-clamps. They do add a fair bit of extra expense to the build, but in my opinion, it was totally worth it. A tri-clamp is made up of four parts, which is kind of weird. It has a ferrule on either side, one sitting like that and one sitting like that. This is what they look like without the clamp on top of it. The clamp itself and the gasket which is sitting in the middle. You don't need to do that if you don't want to, but I liked the idea of being able to change the height of my column depending on whether I'm in pop mode or CCVM mode and things like that. It's totally up to you though whether or not you want to. Next, above the column connected by the tri-clamp, is this little T piece here. Honestly, if you're good at fabricating things like this, just make one. I decided to buy this. Basically, it's just a T section of 51 millimeter or two inch pipe. I'm using stainless because that's what I could find to buy, but you could make this out of copper as well. Right now, the still is in pot still mode and this is capped at the top, it is sealed off. When you use it in CCVM mode or reflux mode, that changes, I'll get back to that in a second. When it's in pot still mode, the vapor comes up through the column, across the arm, 
and then falls back down towards the condenser. Once again, everything is held together with tri-clamps. I did braze these together myself, the tri-clamps to the copper, all of the fittings, and I had zero experience brazing before I started this project. I did document the process of learning how to do this and then sharing a few tips that other people gave with me and sharing the tips that I learned as I went along as well in a couple of other videos. So I'll stick a card up top to those for you if you're thinking you want to do this. Just a note, like I said, I braised these joints. You can solder them as well. Um, some people call it silver solder. It melts at a lower temperature than the brazing rod. I have not used solder to connect copper to stainless yet, so I can't comment on that. But a lot of people think it is an easier process to learn for a newbie than brazing. And to be honest, there's probably a little bit more information out there on how to do it. So it's your call on which way you go. So the vapor comes over the arm and down into the condenser. And for me personally, I decided that I wanted to make a shotgun condenser. One of the reasons I wanted to do that is I didn't have to create a reducer here somewhere or buy a reducer, which for me was going to be expensive. That would have to bear any weight. I could just build the shotgun condenser in the same 51 millimeter two inch copper as the rest of the still. If you don't know what a shotgun condenser is guys, I have a video building this exact shotgun condenser and I'll stick a link for that up top. But basically it's a series of smaller pieces of copper inside of this one, which carry the vapor uh, down towards the spout. This large pipe is basically a water jacket. Cold water is pumped into the bottom here, travels up the condenser and is exhausted at the top. The other advantage of a shotgun condenser is that it creates a lot of cooling power within a very short length. To put it in super simple terms, this condenser here is about five times more efficient in terms of length to cooling than a simple Liebig condenser would be because essentially it's five Liebig condensers in one. It doesn't quite work like that, but for now that's close enough. <laughs> I decided to make my own reducer here to direct the distillate into the collection jars. A lot of people said that I was crazy for making this when I could have just bought a piece uh, that would have done much the same job. I agree, but I wanted to learn how to braise uh, while I did it, and in New Zealand these pieces aren't so cheap. Regardless of what you decide to do here, you are going to want something that helps direct the distillate into your collection jars or into your parrot if you decide you want a parrot. The cool thing about this build is you can pretty much make the entire thing yourself if you can get your hands on the copper pipe. If you already have skills involving working with copper and brazing or soldering, TIG welding, something like that, then chances are you don't need to buy anything. On the other hand, you can also buy all of these parts pre-made on Amazon or AliExpress or something like that. And to be honest, most of the parts have nothing to do with distilling. They're just generic parts that you can pick up. And of course, you can do somewhere in between. <laughs> Anyway, now that my stripping run's finished, I can pull this thing apart and show you how it works in CCVM mode. Like I said earlier, when in CCVM mode, the top comes off up here, and we can replace the cap with a small extension, once again using the tri-clamps. As you can see, these things are insanely easy to use. This little extension is put here to accommodate a coil, a second condenser that goes down inside the column like so. And this is a reflux condenser as opposed to the shotgun, which is a product condenser. The reflux condenser is there to create reflux, while the product condenser is there to condense the product before it goes into the collection jars at the end of the still. To be fair, this is one of the things that you're going to have to make if you want a copper coil like this. There is, however, another option to use CSST or corrugated stainless steel tubing. I'll leave a link down below to Dad 300's thread on Home Distiller, which discusses that in a whole lot of detail. In any case, here's a quick crash course on how a CCVM still works and why you need one of these. This condenser, whoops. This condenser is designed to slot into the top, like so, and I'll pull it out to show you what's going on. The idea is that you can slide this up and down and have it at different positions to control the amount of reflux that's going back down the column versus the amount of vapor you're sending over to your product condenser. The lower you put the coil, the more reflux is sent back down the tube, 
and the higher you send it up you get to a point where about 50% of the vapor is going over to the product condenser and the other 50% is going back down as reflux and falling back down through your stainless steel scrubbies or copper scrubbies or marbles whatever you've got in the in the column below and this is why you don't need a valve for a CCVM still this is essentially acting as a super simple valve right here just like that so there you have it guys this is my CCVM pot still combo in any case guys thanks for watching I hope that was helpful for the people that have been asking questions about this still if you have any specific questions don't be afraid to ask I'm more than happy to answer the comments down below and there's a whole bunch of people that know a whole lot more than me lurking around down there too or if it's a question that I think I can fill a video out I can make a whole video on the question as well so thanks for watching guys if you like the video like it if you really liked it have a think about subscribing and I'll catch you guys next time see ya